You know, I got I got up on this stage, Kath. I had knee surgery. And, uh, you know, in England, they got a plan for my kind of problem to give you a cane. Well, um, on a more serious and somber note, uh, we're just a few days away from September 11th. That horror of these twin towers, they were the example to the world of terror of American wealth and strength. And they came down. There um, are two other towers that have been standing for 220 years for one of them, and way back since for 233 for the other one of them. One of the towers is the U.S. Constitution. It is standing as an absolute beacon of truth and a contract between the people and those that govern them for 220 years when you couple that with the first 10 amendments which the first Congress passed. The other tower, towering even above that Constitution, is the nation's creed. The nation's creed is referenced in the preamble to the Constitution. That creed is the Declaration of Independence, and it's the reason for the 4th of July. It says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and listen to this, secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, our onboard children. Where did those blessings come from? They're capitalized in this preamble. Those two twin towers that have been the greatest example of self-government the world has ever seen have produced some fruit, and I don't mean fruits. They, they produce some pretty incredible fruit. For the first time in all of history, a people stands on the shoulders of those men 200 plus years ago with the security of having the strongest military in the history of the world in the most wealthy nation in all of history, where the people enjoy the greatest standard of individual freedom backed up by that muscle and that money in the history of mankind. And there are nasty little termites gnawing at those twin towers. And some of them are standing there thinking an ax to it. Every time the government makes a new rule that isn't included in the Constitution as their realm of behavior, they steal a piece of our freedom. And then when they take a little bit more money to pay for this tyranny, they steal a little bit more of our freedom. But in this book is a sword much more powerful than a silver sword. In this book is another sword, much more powerful than the gigantic claymore that William Wallace wielded to liberate Scotland from England. In this incredible constitution and declaration of independence are two twin towers of peaceful power. The right to vote and the right to impeach. The sore of impeachment is coming out, Mr. President, and it is beginning to glisten. It's coming out, and we are watching you, and we are growing in indignation, and we are growing in power and numbers, and you cannot take away our courage. Hey, I'm 64. I've had a great time. I've got 12 living grandchildren and two more that are living in Mama's tummy. And I had a wonderful father to pass last year, and several people said to me, oh, he's had a good life. This was before he played his trumpet in church the last time. My father had a good life till his last breath, and now he has a great life. My mother had a stroke, was in a nursing home. Today she told me I was cute. I, 
Is that good? I don't want her God. I, I mean, she's still encouraging me. I'm still her silly little Marky. Life is precious, and it's the first right mentioned in our nation's creed. And anytime you hear somebody say, oh, they've lived a good life while they're still alive, say, I beg to differ with you, dear. In America, every second, every heartbeat is good. Let it continue to be so. Um, in closing, I want to just share a little something that uh, Patrick Henry had to say. Kind of a sweet guy. He was pretty indignified about the way things were happening. And there was a bunch of people quibbling and mincing words and cowering and saying, oh, don't make waves, let's be politically correct. Let us bow to the king. And uh, he was pretty, pretty freaked out about it. So he, he rose and, and issued this little challenge. He said, what is it that those gentlemen want? What would they have? Now listen to this. This is so important for us now. Is life so dear? Or peace so sweet? as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery. Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what all, of course, others may take. You want to say it you? Do you mean it? Can you say it with me? Can you stand and say it with me? I know not what course others may take, but give me liberty or give me death. Long live the Republic!